Good afternoon, and welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Kelsey McCraw, and joining me today is Matt Brock from Virginia Military Institute, who is also the Vice President of the Engineers Without Borders chapter. Thank you for being with us today. Sure, thank you. Um, so can you tell me about what Engineers Without Borders do? Engineers Without Borders is a nonprofit organization um, nationwide that just uh, gets together and tries to apply an engineering background and engineering skill to help countries in need, peoples in need, people in need that are typically, you know, um, across uh, international waters and uh, on different continents. Okay, and you know, your organization shares a name with Doctors Without Borders. So, um, for the people who are more familiar with that organization, how do the two compare? Well, it's the same type of thing. It's any type of humanitarian work. Um, Doctors Without Borders provide what they know best, um, medicine, to people in need, and engineers are trying to help out. Same thing. So we set up this organization, Engineers Without Borders and uh, apply our engineering background, our, our knowledge, and our skills to um, better the lives of humans in need. Um, so how did you get involved with Engineers Without Border um, and your position within the chapter? Um, why did you get involved? Well, um, I got involved mainly because I've always, liked to, I've always liked humanitarian work. I've always loved mission trips and stuff like that. Then I came to VMI and studied engineering. Um, and, I've loved engineering always, and one of my professors, Major Moore, has done Engineers Without Borders, and I didn't really know about it until this year. And he kind of came, came over to WNL, did a talk about it, and kind of got the words spread, and we got in touch with each other and got in touch with the, the local chapter out in, out in Lynchburg, and things kind of came together slowly, and um, I was one of the founding, I guess, kind of members of the VMI chapter, and just kind of took off from there. Yeah. So what has y'all's work been with the Lynchburg chapter? Um, what is, has, how long have they been established and how did y'all get in connection with them? The Lynchburg chapter has been established for uh, probably around I mean, five to ten years. It's been there for a while. And it's a group of uh, four professional engineers um, who are you know, professionally working at, um, you know, at a company and they, they like to do the same thing. And we got in touch with them somehow. Major Moore kind of reached out and found them. And they've been really just kind of like guiding us through the process of how it works, how Engineers Without Borders works, giving us uh, design problems to do, um, you know, kind of just mentoring us along the way. Mm -hmm. And so like you said, you just recently founded the chapter in December. Um, what kind of things have y'all been doing since December? It's been a lot. It really has because the goal was in December we had our first meeting and we looked at it and we were just kind of just, just in awe of how much stuff we had to do. We had originally about you know, six people from VMI, five or six people from VMI that really expressed interest mm -hmm. in it. And uh, we got together, kind of talked with the professionals in Lynchburg. Um, and the prof they, our professor, Major Moore, really let us run with it. It's been awesome. We've been working on a fundraising, getting the name out, trying to do as many, uh, getting our name everywhere, mm -hmm. just letting people know, and doing a lot of design work too, which has been really cool for all the engineers that have been involved to actually have a hands-on experience and real problems that actually that actually do exist. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun doing that. So tell me about this design work. What kind of um, projects have y'all been working on? Um, well right now we have a, a couple like t design teams we call it set up and uh, teams that incorporate people from WNL and VMI to get together with our professors helping out. Um, we have uh, around three professors, um, two from VMI, one from WNL helping out and we go through and assess what needs to happen. So the the Lynchburg chapter kind of addresses, say, we have this problem, so how, why don't you go ahead and just look at it and try to take care of it. And one thing we've been doing is uh, designing, you know, trying to figure out how much rainfall is going to happen and how to, how to catch it, how to transport it to, a, mm -hmm. to an area to give, a, you know, give this town actual, you know, more arable land. Mm -hmm. um, so, like you said, the chapter is kind of a collaboration between WNL and mm -hmm. VMI. Um, how did that partnership come about? Was it your professor or did y'all reach out to them? Actually, uh, it was WNL really had a huge uh, helping hand in getting it found and getting it started. Mm -hmm. uh, my, like I said earlier, my professor Major Moore came over here, gave a talk, and a couple of uh, students, Dana Fredericks and Cat Williams or uh, Cat Lawson, excuse me, uh, contacted him about doing something here and kind of rolled from there. Okay. So. Um, and what do you see the benefit from working cross campus? Um, like, how does that help your organization? It's it's definitely really nice to be able to have a different group of people involved, different mindset. Um, I know VMI, we have a, a different schedule, um, which is both helpful at times, and sometimes it is a little more uh, trouble to work with, but um, you know, having two different, two different uh, ways to look at problems. And it's also nice just to have a different group of people to talk with, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, um, so um, 
your chapter has a big future ahead of itself. You're planning a trip to Bolivia. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about that trip and what your plans for that are? Sure. On July 27th, I believe it is right now, the plan is July 27th, I'll fly out of the States, um, land in Bolivia, kind of acclimate for a few days, get adjusted, and head out to the site. And we're going to have uh, two groups working. The first group's going to leave July 27th. Um, they're going to work for uh, about six days in the town of Pampoyo, um, surveying, collecting data, and really starting on this actual um, this water catchment system that we're trying to design. And then uh, a few days into at the round, like you know, day seven, the second group's going to come in and kind of rotate people out, get some uh, get some fresh workers in there, and uh, work on the phase two, what we're calling it, the project. And uh, that's going to be actually installing an irrigation line to bypass contaminated, uh, contaminated mine source and stuff like that and uh, hopefully finish up the project. Okay. Um, and can you describe what you know about the area that you're going to, Pampolia? Is it, what is, what is it like economically and politically and socially? It's a, it's a troubled town actually. It's, it's, a, it's a small town, 100, around 120 people live there um, in the mountains, in the Andes Mountains, uh, around 13,000 feet elevation, which is very high and we're kind of actually concerned about working up that high just for the low oxygen levels but a uh, small town um, they really you know don't have much outside contact and uh, the, one of the main reasons is that reasons for that is because they don't have any cash crops they have no need no reason to be able to go out of town to to buy or sell goods and so we're trying to kind of help them fix that problem okay and um you said your chapter got involved with this through the lexington cha or the lynchburg chapter mm -hmm. um why this particular project um, well, it's, it's been something, that's, oh, that's the beauty of Engineers Without Borders. It's the, the town contacts EWB, is what we call Engineers Without Borders. The, the town of Pampoyo actually contacted EWB. They found out that you know, they had problems and, um, and it just got, we kind of got assigned this project. So it's the town was really in need and we got assigned this and we just were happy to take it on. Mm -hmm. So um, can you explain more about this irrigation system and what exactly um, will happen with that? Sure. So what the, what the issue is, is this town has one, one water source going into it. And in Bolivia, they're really, you know, unlike the, the states, there are few uh, regulations that, that kind of control contamination. And people have been mining up in the mountains up there for tin and, cop tin and copper and things like that and don't really control the waste to it. So there's contamination um, that's leading into the town and just kind of killing all their crops. And they're having a really time uh, surviving. So our plan is to go and bypass this this contamination with a small irrigation line um, to a different location where they can regrow crops and, and uh, provide a new source for them. Awesome. Um, so what are you most excited about for the trip? Um, I'm really excited about getting out there and kind of actually like getting on the site and you know, really helping the people. Mm -hmm. you know, getting, getting, uh, getting the rest of our team involved and uh, showing that we can make a difference. Yeah. And your chapter hopes to work with the same um, village in the future. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me some of the, what kind of plans you'll have for that? Right, we have a, right now we have a, a few phases that we've set up, phase one, phase two, like I mentioned earlier, and originally just kind of get this irrigation system set up um, and get it running. And the big thing too is teach them how to operate it because it's not gonna be any good if anything breaks and they don't know how to work it. So it has to be a simple system that is uh, sustainable by them and they can run. Then also uh, as we develop one of the good things is uh, that Engineers Without Borders isn't only engineers being involved. You know, other humanitarian people, you know, anybody that's interested in it can help out. Um, we have biology majors that are going to be in town assessing um, their sanitation issues and how to keep them, uh, keep them healthy. And that's going to be kind of uh, as we develop the project in the years, you know, years from now. Great. Um, so what other plans does your group have, and besides Bolivia, does your group have for the future? We've been looking at other chapters that have been set up and uh, like chapters of Virginia Tech have multiple projects going on right now, which is definitely a goal we would love to have. But a big thing now is to get people involved, get as many people you know, interested in helping out so we can kind of get all the manpower on it and get things rolling. Yeah. So your chapter is working on raising money for Bolivia. Um, how have you all been going about that? Uh, right now we've set up, we've met with uh, the Rotary Club, local organizations, um, like I said earlier, getting the name out. And right now there's a Virginia uh, environmental conference going on at VMI like, as we speak. And we've been raising awareness there too, just trying to get our, our name out of cards, posters hung up everywhere. And uh, we plan on cont contacting local churches um, and just getting as many donations as possible. And also a big thing is we're trying to do is contact some, uh, some alumni and kind of get their involvement. 
So what has been the community's um, response to y'all's efforts? Oh, it's been awesome. It's been absolutely awesome. We've had, um, we actually set a page up on Facebook and stuff like that. It's been pretty kind of surprising how many people really got involved there and uh, you know, kind of showed their support on Facebook and um, on our alumni site, there's a way to donate for EWB and people have been really happy with it. I've gotten a lot of compliments of you know, how, how happy they are to see VMI and also WNL kind of cross borders. So it's also uh, Engineers Without Borders and also you know, kind of Lexington, a little mini version of that, kind of crossing borders with the WNL. So it's, people have been really supportive. Um, and what will this help you with in the, your future? You're a civil engineer major. Mm -hmm. um, how will this um, benefit you going forward? Right, it's, uh, it's kind of cool because um, all the design problems, for one, multiple reasons, but the design problems we've been doing have been really actually putting me ahead in class. We've had professors meet with us um, a few days, you know, like, you know, like a month ago we had a professor take us out, you know, at you know, 8 o'clock at night and just kind of sit us down and go over these problems. And actually today in class I went over the same thing. So it's kind of cool to get a, a step ahead of some people with that. And also you're just learning how to work with people. It's a, you know, saying, you know, that I'm a, kind of like the head of a design team. You know, it's really a lot of like management and leadership and getting people to really get the work done. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kelsey McCraw for the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report.